This is a hands-on exercise for the GBS workshop, which was presented at um, <coughs> Palmerston North in uh, New Zealand for ag research. Uh, so this is a, a um, part of a series of lectures, and this is the hands-on portion. Um, so we want to re-emphasize that, uh, that the, the def defaults for the pipeline and the tutorial settings are absolutely wrong for your particular species. So you need to very carefully think about what uh, your particular situation is and make smart choices as you go. So please do not expect to get good results if you're using just the defaults or the tutorial settings. Today we're going to use a, uh, a few Unix uh, shell commands. You don't need to be an expert in this, but you don't, we'll need to learn just a few. Um, and these are the main ones. ls, which does a list of the directory contents. Uh, cd, which is change directory. And then less, followed by a file name, which displays the contents of a text file. Okay. So um, a tassel pipeline uh, uh, can be either run with a very long pipe, uh, pipeline command or the options can be stored in XML files. And XML files are just structured text files. Um, and we use them to store the configuration for running the, the different Tassel plugins. So you can open up an XML file with less or in a text editor. And you can regenerate the command line using the, the following uh, command. And we'll look at those uh, XML files shortly. Okay, so what we're going to do today is run the discovery pipeline, and uh, this, this uh, hands-on tutorial is uh, utilizing a uh, reduced uh, data set. It's um, a, a couple hundred samples, uh, two lanes of sequence data, and the only uh, data that's been retained are the first 200 megabases of chromosomes 9 and 10 in maize. Everything else has been stripped out. Um, this is a lot, uh, will allow us to do this exercise in some reasonable amount of time, and it's, <coughs> it's also useful for, um, for uh, testing purposes as changes in the pipeline uh, are made. So we're going to start up here with the raw sequence, and then um, we will uh, go through counting the tags, creating a tags on physical map um, file. We'll also then go back to the sequence and create a tags by taxa file. Uh, and then use the information stored in the tags by taxa and the tags on physical map files to um, inform the SNP caller and then we'll create some genotypes. So the first step that we will perform is tag counts. Okay. So um, here's our CD command. Uh, this has been set up to run with a um, bootable uh, USB drive and so the commands are tailored to that, but um, it will work pretty much the same on the system that I have it installed on today. So we'll change directory into home, user, GBS workshop. In this case, the user is going to be my login. Um, and then tag counts, individual tag counts. And then we're going to run this, um, this command, and you'll see that it's uh, calling this um, uh, uh, Perl file called run pipeline. This is giving it a bit of um, uh, memory requirements. I've uh, already coded those in, so we're not going not to put that in today. Um, and then it's going to say we're going to use a config file, and here's the, the fastq to tag counts XML config file that we're going to be using, the contents of which are displayed here. So I'm going to run it and then come back and explain what, the, um, what each of these bits inside the XML file are. OK, so here we are. In um, um, on um, <coughs> my computer in the GBS workshop folder, if we type ls, we see um, the contents of that particular folder. And the one nice thing with this uh, setup in Bash is that the um, the uh, subfolders or directories are highlighted in in light blue, and the files are in um, just regular files are in just white text and you'll notice that there's a hands-on tutorial PDF that contains all of this information um, in this folder and it's also available for the, uh, the um, bootable USB. So I'm going to change directories now into 01 and I'm going to use a tab to autocomplete um, and I'll just hit enter there and let's do another ls. We'll say oh here are our sequence files. So that's what's in the raw sequence. So these are uh, 
FASTQ files, you'll notice, um, just to give you a little bit of information, in this one here, the first part, the C, uh, 05F2ACXX is a, an identification um, uh, for a particular flow cell, and this is the lane within the flow cell. Um, it's a fast Q file, and these are gzip compressed, so they take up a bit less space. Okay, so those are our original files, and that's what we're going to be working with. Um, we're going to go into the tag counts folder, and inside that it has uh, whoops, another one, the individual tag counts. And I've changed to that folder, and I'm going to do an ls and see what's there. OK, so there's this XML file called fastq to tag counts. And if I type less and fastq to tag counts, we see, um, we see the, the uh, information in the, uh, the, the con configuration file. And we'll go into that in a minute. So if I type tilde slash bin slash run pipeline dot pl space config file fastq to tag let's plug in dot xml this should run the pipeline oh. ah. so this often happens is you make a mistake if you use the up arrow you can go back and there should be an underscore there for run pipeline and now it's running the pipeline so what we're seeing in this screen at the moment is uh, this would be a barcode, and each one of them has a barcode, and this would be a sample name right here. And it's going to go through and find all of the good reads. So let's go back to the PowerPoint and see what's happening. Okay, so this is the FASTQ to tag count plugin. It's, whoops. It's being called right here, and the input for that is any, any FASTQ uh, file, gzipped or not, in the raw sequence folder. The output is going to be put in the current folder. That's what this dot forward slash means. We need a key file, as you know from uh, one of the previous lectures, and that's located in the pipeline testing key dot text. Uh, we have an enzyme, and of course we have to know which enzyme, so it's APEK1 in this case. We have a uh, number of uh, good reads expected and we've set this number at uh, 3 million, uh, which is relatively small, um, but we have a small data set. So again, do not use the settings from the tutorial to run the pipeline yourself. And then we also have a cutoff of a lower limit uh, of one. So in this case, we're going to uh, keep every tag. And this will be Im important later as we do the, the next step, um, where we will raise this number um, and, and eliminate some of the sequencing errors that show up in the data file. Okay, so let's see if we're done. Oh, indeed we are. So, um, so what do we see here? This is we see that uh, that that um, we had um, in this in, in the the uh, C zero five F two A C X X underscore five dot C N T file. We had one hundred and eighty eight, almost one hundred and eighty nine thousand uh, unique tags um, and so those have been written in this what we can't see is that it pr processed the other file as well um, <coughs> and it, we can tell uh, that we, we read two of two sequence files so that's what we expect it's always good to take a look at the output um, and we can also do an ls and we can see that um, in addition to the fastq to tag counts xml file which was there originally um, we have these two count files, and that's what we're trying to do um, in this step. Okay, so once we have uh, the individual tag count files, we want to, to merge them since we get one for each flow cell, and many times our experiments have uh, uh, ma many, many lanes of, of data. So at this stage, we will merge them, and we will use the, the merge multiple tag count plugin to do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that running and then we'll come back and look at what the options are. So I need to change directories back and then to an O2, merge tag counts, and let's see what's there. Okay, so it's merge tag counts XML, and I'm going to just change this XML file to the merge tag counts and run it. Okay, so that's running. And it's very, very quick. Um, there's 
there's our uh, single count file that we were looking for. So let's see what we did. Okay, so with, with this XML file, we ran the merge multiple tag count plugin. We're asking where, th where are the input files, and they're in that 01 individual tag counts directory. Um, where are we going to put the output? That's what the O stands for. We're going to put it in this current directory within, within the file gbsworkshopmaze.cnt, and we're going to set our lower limit of uh, the number of times you need to see a read to five. So what that does is it allows us to, um, uh, to exclude singleton um, sequencing errors at this step. So it's our, our first real quality control step. So now we have the tag count files. And we want to make this um, file called the tags on physical map. So uh, in order to do this, what we need to do is align uh, each tag to a reference genome and then uh, keep, that tr uh, keep track of that information um, in this special file called uh, tags on physical map. But there are a couple intermediate steps to doing that. The first thing we need to do is take this um, merged tag count file that we created and, cr and uh, convert it to a fast queue format. Uh, that's because we use an external aligner to, to do the alignment and it will only accept um, files that are in the fast queue format. There's more detail on this in the documentation. So let's, let's change directories again to the 03 tag count to fast queue uh, file. I'll just do a clear here to make it a little bit easier to see. We'll do an ls. So here's the tag count to fast queue XML. It's the same thing as what you'll see before. So I'm going to, uh, you'll see in the uh, PowerPoint. So I'm going to just run this. Okay, it's calling the pipeline and it's running. Okay, it was very quick. You'll notice here that it said the, min the total number of tags that it read was uh, f uh, 5,291 and it wrote one more. There's a, um, a counting error right here. But, um, and this is all above a minimum count of five, and it output it to this GBS workshop maze.fastq. Okay, so that's all that this did, is it, it um, did that cutoff. And now, um, now we have the fastq, we want to use an aligner to align to the reference genome. Um, in our case, uh, we're going to use Bowtie 2. There are other aligners. We, um, the pipeline is known to work with Bowtie 2 and BWA, um, and maybe other uh, aligners uh, uh, can be um, used uh, in the future, it's, as long as they uh, output uh, standard SAM format. So let's, let's change directories. So this, this directory has nothing in it. Um, now, I think we'll, we'll give this a little bit of a cheat. Uh, this is a very long, um, uh, long command. Uh, and it doesn't use an XML file because Bowtie 2 doesn't support XML files. So we're going to see if um, I've typed this incorrectly, and we're going to do the alignment. Okay, so, um, so it took these 52,092 reads. 100% of them were uh, unpaired. In other words, they were not paired in. They were single reads. Um, all of them aligned. Now, this isn't surprising because this is a, a bit of a contrived data file. You will normally see that some of them don't align. Um, in our case, 76.5% aligned once. And uh, to one location, and about 24% uh, aligned to multiple locations. Now, I just noticed that I made a typo that'll um, cause me a problem in my next step. This should say GBS underscore workshop underscore maze dot SAM, but it doesn't. So I'm going to just change that to the proper file name so that we don't um, have trouble in the next step, which I've just done using MV. So now we have um, a SAM file, and that's uh, what we should have. Um, now we'll use uh, the, uh, the Tassel plugin, SAM converter plugin, to convert uh, the SAM file to a tags on physical map file. So we need to 
change directories into this 04 underscore TOPM directory. So I will do that. Okay, and we see that we have the semconverter.xml in there. So we'll just use the up arrow until we find and we'll do SAM converter. Okay, this won't take very long. We'll come back to this and see what it's doing. Okay, we're running the pipeline. We're running the SAM converter plugin. The input file is in this 03 SAM GBS workshop maze.sam. Uh, and we're going to create a file in the current folder. The output is going to be GBS underscore workshop underscore maze dot TOPM. And that's it. That's the end of the SAM converter. That's, that's the, it's relatively easy. Let's see if it's done. Okay. Um, so uh, you'll see that it, uh, it, it read, read this file. Um, it found 52,092 tags in the SAM file, and it's assuming that it's a Bowtie 2 file format. Um, and it wrote all of this to this GBS workshop uh, maze.topm file. And let's just do a clear and an ls, and we'll see what's in there. Okay, so here's our GBS workshop maze topm. So indeed, it was created. Now we have our topm. Um, so we've done the tag counts and the TOPM, and we want to do the tags by, uh, the next step uh, is to use the tags by taxa. Now you'll recall that when we did the merge into the master tag count, we set a lower limit of five for the uh, number of times a, t a tag must appear for it to be uh, considered uh, to be included in that file. We'll use that information uh, to inform what goes in the tags by taxa of uh, file as well. So, in other words, if it's not in the master tag counts file, it won't be uh, put in the tags by taxa. Now, the tags by taxa is just a table, a very large table, that tells you which tags are in which taxa or which samples. And so that's the next step. Matching tags to samples, okay? So that's the tags by taxa. So I'm going to go into this, uh, switch, whoops, switch into this 05 underscore TBT, uh, individual uh, TBT, where TBT stands for tags by taxa, and then I'm going to run the plugin and we'll come back to um, what the options are. Okay. Okay, let's see what's there. There's that seek to TBT HDF5 plugin XML, which is what we want to run. Fortunately, I can config file. go. Okay, so that's running, and you'll see here that it's looking looking at barcodes and sample names, which is um, totally what we expect. And let's go back and see what it does. Okay, so it's the Seek 2 TBT HDF5 plugin. Um, so the um, Seek, Seek is sequence, and 2 is obvious. TBT is the tags by taxa. This HDF5 here we've um, talked about in some of the other lectures which stands for Hierarchical Data Format 5. We've um, uh, switched to using that because it um, will allow us to hold many, many um, samples, tens of thousands and millions of uh, marker positions. Um, so that's what, what that is. It's a particular um, form of the TBT. The input is in the, uh, the, are the raw sequence files again. We looked at those at the very beginning. The, it needs the key file. Um, which is located in the, in the pipeline testing key.txt. It needs to know which enzyme. Uh, it's APEK1. Um, and then it has an output, which is the GBS workshop maze.h5. And it has a, an upper limit of good uh, sequences uh, of 100 million. Um, and that can, uh, has also been adjusted down for this particular exercise. Um, to help keep the memory requirements low. It has a, a log file output here. And then it also needs to know, remember I, I mentioned that it, that it uses that information from the master tag count file. So it needs to know where that is as well. And so that's what this is. Okay, let's see if it's finished running. It has. Okay, so we read two of two sequence files. That's what we expect. 
Um, and it should have created a, uh, a file here called GBS workshop maze h5, which it did. Um, so that's exactly what we expect. So we now have the TBT um, in HDF5 format. Okay. So now there's when we create the TBT initially, it's 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 um, like I mentioned, it's a very large table with rows and columns. And uh, we create it in the way that's most efficient for writing those rows and columns during creation. However, when you want to do SNP calling, um, it's, in the, it's not in the optimal orientation. So we need to actually take it and pivot it. So we take the entire table and essentially shift it on, on its side and convert columns to rows and rows to columns. And we use the um, pivot, um, the uh, modify TB THDF5 plugin to do that. This plugin does many things. Please see the documentation for all of the things it can do. In this case, um, we're just pivoting the, um, the TBT, and that's, that's it. OK. OK. So we're going to run the pipeline. using the pivot taxa tbt hdf 5 xml So this should be fairly quick for this small data set, but um, it can be quite a lengthy process for large, large data sets. OK, that's done. OK, let's see. OK, so we've now created the pivot taxa tbt hdf 5 So we'll go back to the overheads. Um, that's done. So we've we've now um, we've done the tag counts, created the TOPM, we've made the uh, the tags by taxa file, and now we're going to use both of those bits of information in the SNP caller to call SNPs. So um, to do that, you, we use the we use this tags to SNP by alignment plugin, and we need to be in the 06 underscore hat map uh, folder to do that. So I need to change. And there's the SNP caller. So um, I will start running this, and then we will ex I will explain what it does. OK. So here's the tags to SNP by alignment plugin. It has some an, an input file. In this case, the input is the TBT. OK, so there's that pivot taxa TBT HDF5 that we just created. Uh, it, it has an output file, so it's gbs underscore workshop underscore maze underscore chromosome plus. This plus is a, is a variable, so um, if it's chromosome 1, it will be replaced with a 1. If it's number 10, it will be replaced with a 10, and so on. Hapmap.txt, hap hmp.txt. Um, you'll recall that we need to use the tags on physical map file to do this, so here's, here it is. And then we have a few of the possible options for the SNP caller. And really, this is one place um, where I will, again, reiterate, do not use these options. Um, but what you uh, use something that's appropriate to the, the um, experiment and species and genetic system that you're working in. Minimum F is a minimum inbreeding coefficient. These are maize inbred lines, so we expect this to be high. Probably not one, but um, uh, which would be the maximum but uh, something close, so we put this up at, at 0.8. The uh, next one is minimum minor allele frequency. That's set at 2%. Um, one reason that you might want to set this at, at 2% or higher is that uh, the, frequencing, the, the sequencing error rate is about 1%, so um, this is another way of getting rid of um, uh, sequencing errors at this stage. This minimum minor allele count is set at, um, at 100,000 in this case, which is uh, much, much higher than we're ever going to see in this data set. And the reason is because the minimum minor allele frequency and the minimum minor allele count um, are con both considered during SNP calling. And uh, if, if the particular uh, SNP passes either one of these criteria, then it goes into the data set. By setting the minimum minor allele count at, at such a high number, we're essentially forcing it to use 
the minimum minor allele frequency. In other words, it'll never pass this minimum minor allele count, so we're forcing it to be uh, uh, judged on, on the minimum minor allele frequency. And here we have start chromosome, SC is start chromosome number 9, and EC is end chromosome number 10. You might recall that at the beginning of this, I mentioned that this is a very reduced data set with only the first two, uh, uh, 20 megabases of chromosomes 9 and 10 in maize, so we're not going to be uh, considering any other um, chromosome because it won't be in this particular data set. Okay. Okay, so it's finished running. Um, and of course, we're only seeing the last little bits here. But um, so for for uh, chromosome 10, it recorded uh, 86 or 8,691 uh, SNP sites, and um, something else for uh, chromosome 9. Let's see if we can scroll up and see. Let's see, we're still in 10. It may it may not. Up. Uh, oh, what's this? Finished chromosome 9. So for here we go. For chromosome 9, it had 8,354 marker sites. Okay. Come down to the end. Now, uh, so here we are. I'll just do a clear. Um, <coughs> so we have GBS underscore workshop maze chromosome 10 hapmap.text.gz and the uh, the uh, same for chromosome 9. So um, if we want to take a look at these, so you can do a less, and this is what it looks like. It's just a big table in the hat map format. Um, and <coughs> it's almost impossible to see anything in this way because this is a rather large table. But um, what you would typically do is use uh, the TASL graphical user interface and um, pull this data in for analysis. Okay. So we now have genotypes. And um, that's the end of the hands-on tutorial. You can take, uh, uh, after you've taken these genotypes, you can pull them into the TASL uh, graphical uh, user interface and look look for some of your very first Q, uh, quality control measures, like looking to see if the, um, the blanks indeed are blank. Um, I recommend using TASL4 in the Geno Summary plugin in, that, in, the, in the GUI for that. Um, you can then sort by um, the number of tags or percent missing or percent uh, a fraction present uh, to let you look at that. You can also then do some filtering. Um, <coughs> With this data set, it's nice to do uh, a little bit of filtering and then make some uh, LD plots. You can also split the data out into two uh, a different data sets. Some of it comes from a, um, from a biparental cross. Another bit comes from an association panel, so you can have a, a bit of a look at uh, how those two different things behave. Um, so that concludes the uh, hands-on portion of the, of the GBS workshop. And... Um, Thank you for your attention.